evening folks well welcome back to another film and something a little bit special tonight we're on the lookout for long eared owls now this is some something i've never photographed i've never photographed them before long eared owls so it's a it, like i said it's something special for me this as i said in that um, not the last film the one about permissions it's always good to have a, a group of you you know you can share knowledge you can share locations and that's how i've managed to get on this one um, a mate of mine he uh, he knew about it from someone else and he's passed it on you know it's been good enough to pass the information on so i've come down here um, it's the second time i've been down i came down the other night managed to get some nice shots i'll explain uh, what i was using but tonight i've just come down brought the 300 down I want to try and get a few um, I want to try and get a few flight shots tonight luckily um, the other night I came down with the uh, with the 500 because there's quite a lot of youngsters knocking about and um, they're out on the branches and that so I actually brought uh, a secret weapon with me and I'll show you good mate of mine Neil he lent it me and long-eared owls are notoriously difficult to find they're so well camouflaged anyway he lent me this this is a, a pulsar thermal imaging scope and it's an absolute game changer for this kind of thing so easy to spot them um, managed to spot a few few youngsters so like i said i came down with the 500 f4 more for uh, keeping a distance really it's it's easy when you spot them you know to start going too close and you don't want to do that you don't want to disturb them so i had the uh, i had the 1.4 extender on and 500 mil and it meant i could i could keep back they didn't even know i would hurt to be honest so i got you know a nice bit of footage of them um we'll put that on after but um yeah the setup tonight i'm hoping to you know again have a look around see if there's any knocking about just wait till the calling wait till the younger calling then hopefully we might get the adults coming in with feed i've seen them coming in off the uh, off the moorland uh, the other night managed to get a you know a couple of shots a couple of uh, off decent backlit ones which were nice but tonight it'd be good to uh, to see if we could get some you know some better ones let's put it that way and it was going a little bit dark so hence i've got the uh, the 3028 I can always go into crop factor with it you know um, and I've, I've also got the extender if we need it but um, yeah that's that's the idea plenty of light gathering with the with the 2.8 so we'll we'll see how that goes but I think for now I'm going to get some concealment on just have a sit down really have a sit down just watch what's going on it's uh, it's only half past seven now so we have a couple of hours at least before um, before it kind of kicks off I would imagine so Let's get some, uh, let's get covered up and see what we can get. Simple camo setup tonight, nothing too elaborate. Bit of a snood there. Cover the old neck up. camo jacket on probably don't need it to be honest but it just helps to it just breaks that little bit of a, a silhouette up it's quite a big consideration is that one of the principles of concealment I'm not sure what they all are to be honest but I know you've got shape shine silhouette spacing some others I'm not sure to be honest but I know that's the military military ones but um, yeah, you can break that silhouette up, it doesn't do any harm to put it on. And then, you don't need that on, but we've got balaclava. And gloves, and lucky gloves on.
I think you'll agree that just gives you that edge camera wise we've got the Tragapan Gilly leg sleeves on I'll be honest I never take these off they're just on all the time and I've got them snagged up hang on there we go there you go they're on there and I've got me Gilly lens cover again probably don't need it but it just doesn't do any harm to put it on it just drapes over the top and that is so quick and so effective story blanket I don't think I'm bother using that tonight I've got more than enough camera on there so like I said the the idea tonight is gonna have a little bit of a mooch around take the scope if we see anything just gonna back off watch it from a distance hopefully they'll start calling and then even maybe the adults will come in if they don't they don't but I'm just gonna back off I'm not getting close to them at all it's a lovely evening be really nice to get some backlit shots later but who knows who knows what we're gonna get
literally two two long eared owl chicks just flown in right in front of me. <laughs> well, <sighs> wow, warm, superb, what a result, I just managed to get two, two youngsters sat together, never even knew how were there, this, this camel really played a part in that, just backed off, Managed to get some nice footage. Got some very similar footage the other night. But light's just dropping a bit now. So I'm gonna go out onto the uh, onto Moorland, see if we can get any flight shots. If I do, I'll, I'll put that footage on, but who knows? But that's a proper success. Two trips and two good nights photography, and especially a new subject as well. Oh, brilliant, absolutely superb. What an amazing bird these are. They, they, their eyes are so piercing that, you know, I mean, short-eared owls are the same, you know, with them yellowy eyes, but uh, the orange on these is something else. So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I want to say a big shout out to all those people that came to see me at the bird fair at the weekend. So we went down to the, the global bird fair down at Oakham near uh, near Rutland it was <laughs> it was wet to say the least it was <laughs> I've not seen rain like it and it were a bit uh, honestly let me straighten this camera up I'm all over the place here Hang on. there we go that's better yeah um, <laughs> they were lifting the, the marquees they're having to hammer them down again the second night I got back and it had blown my tent down so yeah it were an eventful Eventful few days, but fantastic. I, like I said, I were working on Tragapan stand, but there were loads of people came down and you know bobbed into the stall and said hello. Um, bumped into Mike Lane, had a, had a chat with Tom Mason. But the highlight for me for the weekend was a little fella called Otis Williams. I said I'd give you a shout out, mate. So he came down with his uh, dad and his brother, I think it was. And he didn't, he didn't know I was going to be there, but he watches the channel and he painted me this, well he'd drawn this fantastic picture of a barn owl, I'll, I'll put it on and uh, you know we had, we had a chat and showed him some pictures on the camera and it was brilliant but just fantastic to see you know youngsters getting getting involved and having a passion because he, he said he wanted to be a, a conservationist, an artist and a photographer and I thought that's that, that were me <laughs> years and years ago but brilliant you know just you know and if you've, if you've got relatives, if your brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, you know, cousins that, that just show an interest, take them out with you and it can, it can just spark that little, that little flame in them and, you know, they, it's something that can lead to, you know, fantastic things and it was brilliant. It made my weekend did that, so nice one, Otis. Thanks very much, pal. That's it for this one. Um, with a few uh, a few adventures to come, I'm not going to spoil it for you, so you'll have to tune into the next one. But give it a thumbs up if you've liked it, and we'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.